But it's good morning. Nice to be home. Been on the road for a while again. And, you know, it's always nice to get back to home base. It's like when you're traveling, right? It's always nice to get back to your home. Sometimes, you know, when you have children, you can't wait to get away from them. Oh, I need a break. Praise the Lord. I get an opportunity to travel. But within a couple of days, with all the knives and the stress they bring, you start missing them anyway. And you want to get back to the noise and the stress. But there's also the love, right? So I'm here for the love this morning with my congregation, with my brothers and sisters. I see some regular faces and I see some new faces. I see some visitors. We're glad you're here with us. And I know you're tired. Come on. It's Saturday. By the time the fair finished work with us, with the whip all week long for that mighty dollar. We all burned out by today. Thank God for the Sabbath rest, eh, brothers and sisters? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So who is here for the first time? Nobody? Oh, I got one. Welcome, my little brother. God bless you. Anybody else? I'm looking at that young man in the back. Probably been here more than once. Is this your first time? Praise the Lord. I'm glad you came back. So keep giving him the love. He wanted to make it a third time and a fourth time. Amen? Yeah. So how's your week been so far? I like that. Welcome, my brother. There will be good food. Some curry goat, some oxtail, some jerk chicken. I'm joking. This is an Adventist church. You'll be good vegetarian, okay? But let us pray. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful to be in your house today. We're so thankful for the opportunity to worship you. Because I know, Lord, that there's a lot of people that would like to have been here today. Who would have liked, Lord, even though the dead have no thought. They have no idea what's happening anymore. But most of us rather cling on to the life that you have given us. So we're very blessed to be alive, Lord. I know, Lord, things ain't always what we want it to be. But like Job said, we'll, he will never let go. He'll keep holding on. So we'll keep holding on and pushing forward. So now, Lord Jesus, we're in your house this morning, and there's a word that you have for us. I pray now, Lord, that you will use me to deliver the message to your people so we can receive the blessing you did have in store for us this Sabbath morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Turn with me now in your Bible to Matthew chapter 25. I had this sermon I ran out of ink in my printer, so I sent it over to an elder that lives close by me, and he always prints for me. The elder gave me my sermon with four pages missing. So I decided to resort to the computer, right? You always have to have a plan B. So I went to plan B, okay? So I still have the messenger in front of me. But the sermon, I, I didn't even realize he did that because I didn't look at it. The man always been on time with what he's doing, you know? But I received it and I said, where's page one to four? There was none. But I got it here, praise the Lord. So are you there now? The title today is The Midnight Cry of this message. And we're gonna start from verse one. Matthew 25 starting at verse 1 to 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish 
and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all become drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight, praise the Lord, the cry rang out, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, Jesus arrived. And the virgins who were ready, the brothers and sisters who were ready, the saints who were ready, went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the others also came. The others that are sitting in the church right now saying the love of the Lord that you're running out of oil because Jesus is taking too long to come. The ones that are here because we are the bride maids. Jesus is the bridegroom. The ones that are sitting here now getting tired and weary from waiting. In verse 11, the Bible says, later, the others also came and said, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. They ain't been in church. They ain't heard tons of sermon. They grew up in the church. They will tell you, I've been an Adventist for 30 years, 40 years. I've been an Adventist all my life. I was born and raised in the church. But they're running out of oil because they're running out of patience because they got their own clock and God is moving on their time and they're falling asleep. They're falling asleep in the church. Not just from being tired and weary from working all week long. They're falling asleep spiritually. They're going to sleep. And when you go to sleep on the job, because you're in a war and you're not loading up, you're not bringing extra oil, your patience is running short. You will be one of those virgins that the Bible calls foolish. And you will be saying, Lord, Lord, I've been in the church 30, 40 years, raise up, left when I came back but still no oil. Your lamp are dry, running dry. They get tired and weary now because you have to continue building, growing in your faith, your relationship with the Lord. You have to continue beating the Holy Bible, tapping up, because this is where, you know, in Alberta, we're known for the oil. We're known for the oil patch. As a matter of fact, the oil run this entire province. As soon as the price went down, everybody started losing their jobs, losing their home, losing their mind. The amount of domestic violence increased when a man can't pay his bill, he beat his wife or the wife beat him. Yes, the oil is still here. But it ain't worth much anymore. So we're drying up in Alberta. We're losing homes and we're losing hope. And then on top of that now, because you weren't reading, you're not reading anymore. You're busy doing everything else instead of keeping yourself moist with the Holy Ghost. You 
began to dry up. The lamp light is going down. Then something suddenly happened to you. Death came knocking on your door. Death came knocking on your door. And you get all nervous now because you ain't got no oil. You got no oil. You get all nervous now. Oh Lord, I'm dying. Yes, you remember the Lord now, you're dying. But when you're running around doing your nonsense and your oil's drying up and you're coming to church going through the motion, you're not spending time finding, learning, that you cannot run out of blessing in the Word of God. If you keep reading, you keep praying, then the devil look at him and said, you know, if I do this to you, you will, she will turn her back on you. And the Lord said, no. I know Brother Maseka very well. So he weighed the problem, brother. He measured it and he said, it's your size. I have confidence in you. You will overcome. Because he's reading. The Lord knows some oil, Holy Ghost Spirit is still hidden. So the Lord will send the trouble come. Send the problem come. And you either gonna fall down or you're gonna stand firm. But you gotta have some oil. Did you hear what the virgin says? The virgin says, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. The door is open right now. What's gonna happen when the door is closed? What's gonna happen when you don't have a Bible to read? Because you should have been storing this up in your heart. There will come a time that you're going to have to flee from your house, brethren. Because you have to come to terms with the fact that we are living in the last days. And if you don't know that, it's because you haven't been sucking up none of the oil. You haven't been reading. You've just been going through the motion. Going through the motion. Faking it to make it. The sad thing about God and heaven is you can't fake nothing with God. You can't fake your way into heaven. You have to have that relationship. You have to have that love. You got to endure when time get tough. You understand what I'm saying, Bridget? My wife was on the way, by the way. She forgot the baby bottle. She turned back. I hope she still make it. Maybe for the amen, but... I hope she's still making it. It is Sabbath, right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right? So, brethren, I'm telling you something. And I'm going to read. I'm going to do some reading. Some people told me the other day, Pastor, you're reading too much. Well, maybe if you start reading, I won't read so much. Oh, every time you come, you read all this LNG work. But I'm sorry. You need to be reading it. Because if you are reading it, I'll see the reflection in your life. So I'll read it for you. Christ's object lesson this morning. Chapter 29. And it is my favorite author. I hope you're taping this sermon. Is the camera on? Praise the Lord. Good man. Lingering near the bride house are ten young women robed in white. Each carry a lighted lamp and a small flagon for oil. Listen to me now. All are anxiously watching for the appearance of the bridegroom. In other words, we are here anxiously watching for the return of the... I hope you are. Because I am anxiously watching and waiting for Jesus' return. And that's the bridegroom. So I hope you are. But there is a delay. Hours after hours, years after years pass, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents been calling and waiting upon Jesus and they haven't seen him yet. But Sister White put it this way. She says, hours after hours, she didn't say years, but you know, we can interpret it as years went by. The watchers become weary and fell asleep. We have been falling asleep in the 70th Adventist Church. 
We are afraid to say who we are now. We are afraid of who we are. I was talking to a man this week. And the man tell me, God ain't listening to you. God ain't hearing your prayer. You have to help your own self. I said, man, you should be thankful that God is listening to me. Because I know he's listening. It's not about the trouble that come upon your life that tells you if God is listening. It's the fact that you're breathing. And a heap of men like that is still breathing. God is listening. And having mercy, grace, compassion for you this morning. Woke you up again. Gave you one more day. You think God owe you no favor? We have been falling asleep, she says. And this was written a long time ago, you know. Long time ago. We are becoming weary to tell people who we are. We are afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Now, FT, commercial break. If things are going real wonderful, because he said to me, he said to me, look at what's happening to you, pastor. He's looking at my life. He's exact, this is the same man I just bought grocery for it. Examining my life. And say, look at what's happening to you. He has the nerves and the audacity to point out at my family. Look at the attack coming up on your family. I said, well, there's none on mine. My kid is good. My wife is this. My baby mom and dad. I said, oh, that's nice. You know why? My daughter don't go to church. I said, oh, that's nice. I don't go to church. I don't ever believe in God. I said, you know why though, right? Because the devil already have you where he wants you. And have your daughter where he wants her. Have your baby mama where he wants her. So he ain't got no time for you. He got time for me. Because he ain't got me where he wants me. I am the problem. Because I'm still telling people that Jesus loved them. This I know. Cause the Bible tell me so. I'm still telling people that Jesus is coming again. So of course I'm going to have a problem. Because I'm his enemy. But well, you are not. You're his friend. You're advocating with him. Yes, there will be troubles, brethren. But if your lamp is full, if you're not one of the foolish virgins, if you're not just going through the motion, coming to church, for sure, you will make it. Because the race is not for the swift, it's the endurance. Gotta endure, gotta see through, gotta hang in there, take your abuse, you're in a war. Fill up your lamp. Don't let no pastor fill up your lamp. Fill up your own lamp. Fill up your own lamp, still pray, still trust, still continue in the battle. Be like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil need to be afraid because I woke up. Praise the Lord. Yes, I told you the last time. When you get up in the morning, devils should tremble. Demons should shake. They should be afraid. Why? Because I stand in the army of God. The creator of all things. I'm standing on the banner of Jesus Christ. I'm not afraid. And I will never give up. Never surrender. Never turn back. And I'll continue declaring that Jesus saved. Jesus saved. Thank God that Jesus saved. Now brethren, we are the bride. We are the bride of Christ. Do not be afraid, because the bridegroom is coming. Amen. Now, you know, the children, they think we're dumb, is it? I'm going to preach the word. Is that okay? They our kids think we're stupid. Why? I remember growing up in the Caribbean. I remember, I'm a 60s boy. I just look young. You know, the, the cold kind of 
preserve you. I live here a long time. This cold weather make you look young, you know? But I'm a whole brother. I've been here a while. I've seen things back in the Caribbean and here in Canada. I remember growing up. The things are getting so bad out of hand right now. The devil has turned up the heat because he knows his time is running out just like you don't know because you think you got time. But he knows his time is done. I've seen things. I remember the worst thing you had to worry about when I was worrying about growing up was a machete. When a man coming with a machete, everybody get nervous and run. No man coming with a machete, nobody even paid no mind. Ain't afraid of machete no more. The worst thing I've seen in my country was some homemade guns. You know? I'm not here promoting guns, but it was bicycle. They would cut off, you know, the middle bar? It's hollow. And they would create a gun from that. And that was the weapon they had. We had no guns. All of a sudden, my country's flooded with guns, and we don't make guns. The devil flood them. The devil flood them to destroy a high man that we used to call a God-blessed place. Now it's been looked at as a cursed place. I see some guy, something come and watch up this new wanted man. He's sending a message to the government last week. This guy sent a message to the government. Oh, I got this new gun from, I'm not gonna call the country name, Haiti. And, and this gun is so powerful that it can, one bullet can blow up a police station. One bullet can blow up a police car, so the police should be afraid of him. Sound like he's the one that is afraid, eh? Where did these weapons come from? What's going on? The enemy has turned up the heat, and he turned up the heat on every one of us, our children, our husband, our wife, and he's doing stuff to you that if you ain't got no oil, is your oil, brothers and sisters. This is what's going to keep you to the end. If you ain't spending no time with the word, you think you're going to make it? No, you're not. You're going to fall on the wayside. You're going to fall. Commercial break over. Back to the sermon. Was that good? Praise the Lord. I didn't get any water. My throat getting dry. Can somebody get me some water, please? Behold, the bright one coming. Go ye out to meet him. The sleepers suddenly awake, spring to their feet. They see the prop precision moving on, bright with torch and glad with music. They heard the voice of the bridegroom, they heard the voice of Jesus. And the voice of the bride has for waiting on the Lord, singing, Hallelujah, here comes our Savior. The ten maiden seize their lamp and begin to trim themselves in haste to go forward. But five, thank you, have neglected, five have neglected to fill their flasks with oil. They did not anticipate so long a delay, and they have not prepared for the emergency. In distress, they appeal to their wiser, wiser, grounded Christian brothers and sisters to give us some of the Holy Ghost. You can't give it away, brethren. You cannot save your children by giving them, listen now, Jesus is coming now, dear him, now I know you didn't know much, so now I'm gonna tell you some stuff. No, you can't give it away. It's already planted in you, and that's what's gonna save you. They have to be reading, they have to be studying, they have to be trusting God themselves. You can't give it away. You know, a young man came to visit me. Well, two couples came to visit me, a young couple yesterday. They like me because I always tell them the truth. They don't like it, but they still like me. It's weird. They don't like what the past have to say because I hit them hard all the time. I slap them around with truth. They don't love it. But they're still coming back for more. It's weird. And I looked at him, I said, listen man, 
I was having supper with my wife a couple years ago, my wife with my children at the table, and I don't know what came over me. But I look at my wife and I said, you know, honey, I love you, you know, but I'm not going to hell with you. Why did you say that? I said, because at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my own salvation. And she's responsible for her own salvation. And you're responsible for your own salvation. Your girlfriend is responsible. You're all responsible for your own salvation. And I said, I'm not going to hell with my wife. If that's where she wants to go, that's her journey. And, and, and she ain't going to hell with me either. If I, that's where I want to go, I'm on my own. In other words, brethren, you're responsible for your own salvation. We as men has responsibility, I'm telling him, to be good spiritual leaders. Like I like with this young man, I've seen him sitting there with his wife, right with my brother, and I see you bring your kids to the house of God, and you're trying to live an amplified life for the Lord. You're trying to show them the way, because the education is good, you'll put food on their table, but it will not save their soul. So you're trying to show them the way, you know, because you're responsible for their salvation. They're, they're going to make choices. You might not like the choice, and that goes for your wife. We as men have responsibility to live a, a good and holy life in front of our wives, in front of our children. God has given us a different responsibility. The wife is here to nurture them, nurture us, but we have to lead, and you lead by example. Not trying to beat the Bible down and then beat the Bible. And she went on to say, but five have neglected to fill their flasks with oil. They did not anticipate it, such a long delay, and they did not, and they, they have not prepared for the emergency. In distress, the appeal to a wiser companion said, give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the waiting five with their freshly trimmed lamp have emptied their flagons, or their flasks, they have no oil to spare, and they answer not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. I am not going to be selling forever. I'm selling now. I'm selling now. Free oil. Right here. I'm telling you where to find it. It don't cost you a dime. It just costs you a little bit of your time. It ain't cost you no money. Just a little bit of your time, reading, studying. And that's what pastors and elders are for. If you run into something and you don't understand, call your pastor. Call your elder. Call your deacons. By the way, elder, deacons, and pastor, we all have the same job to take care of the flock. Just so you know. You hear that, Brother Jimmy? They can call you and you can tell them about the oil. Right, Brother Jimmy? Praise the Lord, right? Things have certainly changed since I was a young man. I am convinced by the events that are taking place right now as we stand that time is running out. I am convinced that the Father, our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus is just around the corner. I am convinced that the Lord will be here when you least expect it. Why? Why? If you read in the Bible, if you suck up some of the oil, you will see it for yourself. Have you ever read Daniel chapter 12? Daniel chapter 12. The thing about the book of Daniel, come on now, focus, focus. Nothing else but sermon right now, focus. The thing about the book of Daniel, focus. You're going to need this to teach later, young brother. The thing about the book of Daniel, 12. He talks about, and it was written over 22, 2300 years ago, you know. That's way before Jesus. It was written like two, 300 years before Jesus was born. The thing about the book of Daniel, it tells us about now. Isn't it crazy? How can something tell us exactly what's going to happen now? Look at this. Look at this, it says. Now, Daniel chapter 12. The Bible says in verse 1 to 4. Now, at that End time Michael, in case you don't know who Michael is, is Jesus. You can talk to me later, I'll explain it to you. 
the great angelic prince who will stand guard over the children of your people will arise. Listen to me now, brethren. And there will be a time of distress such as never occur, a time of hardship. We never seen this thing that are happening now. Craziness. What are you telling me two weeks ago? This man invited his 11 year old daughter over for a birthday and then killed her. What the hell is that? This is craziness. How can, because the wife don't want to be, go get another woman. God didn't just make one, get another one. I see more than one woman sitting in the congregation. If my wife leaves me, I'll follow her. Yes, I'll go with her. She leaves me, however. But <laughs> God forbid she, you know, I'm older, so most likely she's going to bear me. But if she dies and I get lonely, I'll find another wife. There's more than one woman out there. I'm not going to sit around and hope and be miserable. If I want another wife, I'll get another wife. Even if i got to get one of them bride from overseas. There's more than one. What are you killing the little kid for? What does she do to break up your home? It's you and your wife that never knew to communicate. And did not have God as the center of your home. Why you would find problem. We well, don't kill the child. We're living in crazy time. But well, look at this. The Bible goes on to say, I'm still in verse 1. And I don't see nobody reading. Don't nobody bring nobody to church anymore? Oh. Technology, you see? Listen to this. This is going to take care of that. And it goes to say, and there will be a time of distress, such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. But at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in where? In where? The book of life will be what? Rescued. So right now, in case you do not know what is happening, in case you're not aware, I, I keep jumping ahead of myself. There's just so much. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be in church today. It's crazy. I, I, I'm really excited, you know, trying to calm myself this whole way. Verse 2. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake. Resurrected. Resurrection time. Right? You know? Dear to everlasting life. Some of us, name are written in the book of life. And if Jesus should come right now, we will be given everlasting life for our faithfulness. But some to what? Disgrace and everlasting contempt. Those who are spiritual, which will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the star forever and ever. But listen to this now. This is the kicker. Listen to the kicker. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the scroll until the end of time. Many will, listen to this, many will go back and forth and search anxiously through the scroll and knowledge of the purpose of God is revealed by his prophet. Daniel 4 says in another version, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall go to and from, and knowledge shall increase. That is the kicker. If you do not believe that we are living in the end time, just look at this part. Knowledge shall increase. Now, I'm from the 20th century. Roll over into the 21st. I remember some of the big events of the 20th century. They came this thing called nuclear power. Yes, nuclear power. Nuclear power was a little bit different than, you know, just oil and cold and stuff like that. We went nuclear. Nuclear was to the 20th century what steam power has been to the 19th. A game changer. Suddenly, humanity had a power source that didn't pollute was efficient and practic practically unlimited, and so had the potential to change the planet overnight. Unfortunately, it was a two-edged sword, in that the same energy source could be used to create the most destructive weapon in history, threatening humanity's survival with its very present. Additionally, 
while nuclear power plants didn't spur pollution into the air, in the hands of the truly incompetent, they had the capacity to render a whole region. We have heard about a nuclear disaster that happened at plants where people can't even go there anymore. So the nuclear power served its purpose, 20th century. Watch this. What about the computer? Hey, yo, when I was growing up, growing up computer would take up a whole room. Sometimes a room big like this. Take it all up. We had typewriter. I had to learn on a typewriter. That's the problem with these kids nowadays, eh? The exposure to the knowledge that have increased because they have learned so much. They were born in an age where there's so much technology. They think they're smarter than you. My kid, my little six-year-old now, he had his birthday on the 14th, Joshua, will take this phone from me and do some stuff that I haven't figured out yet, so I think I'm stupid. Dad, you don't know that? You know? They think because they have some knowledge, they have wisdom, it's just knowledge. They were born in technology age. I was born in typewriter age. The computer, it's a game changer, big time, right or wrong? Big time, the airplane. The airplane was created back in the 19th century, but the airplane has improved so much in, with the increase in knowledge and technology that I can, you know, normally, if you're gonna leave Canada, a while back, even before the 19th century, and say you're going to Africa, it will take you a couple of months. That will take you just one whole day. Huh? All a day, right? Brother Mazeko? Stop in a few places on the way. But it used to take a few months. And you're lucky if you get there because some of the snow on the sea, man. You know? Airplane, rocket, the rockets now, all these rockets that is their building. The submarine, all 20th century. One of my favorite though is the antibiotic. We used to die from the common cold, man. Praise God for antibiotic, eh? Man has increased in knowledge. And then don't forget the television. I remember when I was little, most home did not have TV. And then the dude was black and white and one channel. Now you can get a thousand channels. Easy. Just have to pay the cable guy. A thousand channels. What about internet? All came in from the 20th century. Internet is a game changer. Just about every one of us sitting here have internet in our home. And a computer or two. I think I have five in my house. Computer. Crazy. And then of course, don't forget the radio. The radio was way more popular till the TV came in, you know, 20th century. I remember my mother would sit there while she's cooking and she's listening to those Armenian stories. Did I say that right? Some old stories. She looked at that story. She listened for that every night. She had no TV, but she's getting this story over the radio. And she's, she's cooking and she's listening to it. And she's getting caught up in the drama on the radio, she can't even see what happened. And don't forget the cell phone, 20th century. I remember when those came around. Yes, you young folks, I'm old. I was around when the cell phone started, okay? Yes, I was. I was around. Yes, about 83. I had one too. Of course, I gotta get one, it's the latest gadget, right? We become gadget people. I had to get one. But I remember something though. Back in 79, 80, I hear them talking about when, listen to this, this is strange. This might say, wow, these people are cavemen and women. They were talking about being able to talk to somebody and look at them. I, I said, what? They're gonna do that? I would like to see that happen thinking it was impossible, now they call it FaceTime. You know what I mean? It happened. Knowledge has increased. All from Daniel chapter 12 told us 
23, over 2300 years ago that this was going to happen. And that's when you know you're in the end time. But you think that is nothing. Listen to what's coming next. Now it's 21st century. This is the plan, robotic. We're in the 21st century. Son, if Jesus don't hurry up and come, you're going to have a robot to walk your dog and pick up the poop for you. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I can't wait for that. Because I did 10 years of that, I done with that. My kids still bugging me about a dog. Until the robot comes to pick up the poop, they ain't get no dog. But they're working on that. It will come to life, right? 21st century. Now, they have all the stuff, right? Listen to this. Genetic engineering. 21st century. Do you even know what that means? Some of us are sitting here like, okay, I'll give you a little highlight. It's difficult to imagine that we're on the threshold of being able to program our own DNA. Program your own DNA. That means if it's a man, I just want all boys. You go and you tell the doctor, listen, I just want sons, you know. You know, I want three boys and maybe one girl. You go and every time you're ready to have a baby, they can do it now. Genetic engineering. You can decide what you want to have. Isn't that crazy? It's not into this and said, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what I'm gonna buy. I don't know if it's a I don't want to know if it's a boy. You can decide. We get that advanced in technology. Genetic engineering. Hypersonic transportation, free energy. Gonna come a time where we don't even pay for that anymore. That's where they're moving to, believe it or not. But I have to jump down to my favorite. That's coming, that's coming. The hydrogen powered cars. What does that look like? Now listen to this. I know how we love our cars, amen? And a few women. I know us men, you know, we give it that little extra wax, right? So it's shiny in the summertime. But listen to this, listen to this. Since people have such a love affair with their automobile, it's hard to imagine the car disappearing anytime soon. However, it is conceivable that by the middle of the 21st century, that's the plan, the good old internal combustion engine as we know it will be so obsolete as the steam engine. Electric cars and hybrids will be short-term norm. That's what they get the moving to right now. But they will find considerable competition coming from hydrogen powered vehicle. Check out how this vehicle work. That will have the same power as the 20th century fossil fuel sucking counterpart but run an hydrogen and leave and leave only water vapor in your wake. Not that you would not that you would get to drive the thing. The new car coming, you don't have to drive it. It's crazy. The new cars that you're building moving into the 21st century, you go in, you program where you want to go, you sit down and read your magazine. When you're there, oh, we arrive. That's where they're going. Knowledge has increased. Now I know I, I labor on that. I just wanted to bring you all up today. Can I continue preaching? I can stop now if you want. You want some more? Because I have a bit more here. Is that okay? Because when I go a little bit long, I always ask for time. I don't impose it on the congregation. Are you okay with me going a little bit longer? Can I get maybe 10, 15 minutes more? Is that okay? I have a little bit more. So what about the 20, Matthew 24? What are we going to do with that? Because the thing that Jesus told us about in Matthew 24 is happening right now. You look at verse 10 to 12, and the Bible says, Matthew 24, verse 10 to 12, and the Bible says, that many will fall away and, listen to this, betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will increase, the love of many will grow cold or wax cold. Did you just hear what I said? Many of you that are not in Cornerstone Church, this is a place of pure love. But many 
people in the Seventh-day Adventist church that I love will fall away from the church and will start hating on the, the, the members that remain faithful to God. Fall away. Leave the church. The shaking that is going on. And I can tell you something. It's not a joke. Matthew 21, 22 went on to say, For there will be great tribulation, such as not has been from the 21 to 22, verse 21 and 22 from the same 24. For there will be great tribulation, such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, and never will be. And if those days have not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Don't you notice how short the days are now? I don't know if you're paying attention. The day finished like that. As you turn around, you run out of time. By the time you get up, and the only time we're on time is to go get that money. Most of the time, we're late for everything to go get that money. We're living in Earth history. Things are going to get very strange. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one to five. Second Timothy chapter three. I'm waiting for the young man to put it on the screen for those without the Bible. And the Bible says, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous time, it might sound a little different because I'm reading from the Amplified, that's probably King James, but it's the same thing. But understand that in the last days, dangerous time of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, self-focused, lovers of money, driven by what? Greed, boastful, arrogant, refilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of human affection, callous and inhumane. Irreconceivable, malicious gossipers. Malicious, gossip is a terrible thing. Devoid of self-control. Immoral, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of outward godliness, acting religious, although they have denied its power for their conduct, nullify their claim of faith, avoid such people. We're in a time now where you need to choose your friend carefully. You need to Check out who your children hanging with. The Lord says, avoid certain people. You in the last days, you have to choose your friends carefully. Because I learned this as a child growing up, that your friend will either help you to soar, or they will help you to sink like an anchor. The Lord tells us to choose our friend. People will be mocking you because of your faith, 2 Peter 3, verse 3 to 4, not mocking you, making fun of you. Not liking a bone in your body. Judges warn us of the judgment that was coming in the book of Judge. It says in Judge 1, 14 to 15, Judge wrote, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his holy one to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh thing that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. I'm gonna finish with a quote from Sister White. Not gonna go through everything that I have here. I'm gonna finish with a quote. And this is, I'm gonna, I want you to remember this if you don't remember nothing. A terrible conflict is before us. We're nearing the battle of the great day of God Almighty, the battle of Armageddon, spoken about in Revelation 16, verse 12 to 16. That which has been held in control is to be let loose. What is she talking about? Here is the kicker. Listen to me now. The angel of mercy is falling their wings. There's four angels dispatched on the four corners of the world. 
and they are folding their wings. Right now, the reason why they're still holding back the strife and the terrible thing that is coming is because right now, as I am speaking to you, God is sealing his people in their forehead. It's like the blood of Jesus has been poured over us to protect us and what's going to come next. Because it's coming. What is coming next? Stay with me now. So give your husband a little. Give your husband, sister, give your husband a little. Ah, he got it. Praise the Lord. The angel of mercy is folding her wings, prepared to step down from the throne and lead the world to the control of Satan. The principality and the power of the earth are in bitter revolt against the God of the heaven. They are filled with hatred against those who serve him. And soon, very soon, they will be fought the last great battle between good and evil. The earth, not just Palestine, the entire earth will be involved and will be the battlefield. The angels of mercy is holding back the strife, brethren. Things are boiling down. We are about to go into a place where the mercy of God will not be with us. You wonder why the place is getting so evil? Because God is pulling back his spirit from us. But he's sealing his people. Make sure you get the seal of God in your heart, in your mind. If not, you'll get the 666 mark. Stand with me as we pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that we are your bride. We thank you so much for the power and the message you gave and used the ten virgin. God, you were so gracious. You said half of us will make it. I certainly hope, Lord, that it will be more. I pray, Father, that your people will stop falling asleep in your church. They will stop getting discouraged by the mockers and the people out there that are continually attacking Christian and our belief, our morals, and the things that we know is important, which is the things of God. Help us to stay strong, Lord. Help us never to get weary. Help us to stay holy. I pray for blessing upon everyone that is here. I know, Lord, each and every one of us came from different homes, but we all come here as sick people to your hospital for healing, and we come here for comfort, Lord. Lord, if we have had any doubt about your love and your mercy and your grace towards us, please forgive us. Help us to hold on to our faith. Help us to keep our lamb filled. Help us to read your word. Help us to spend time with you. Help us to be the only gospel that most people will ever hear. Help us to be your gospel in our community, in our home, and among our peers and our co-workers. Help us to be the Bible, the living Bible, Lord, that when they see us, they will see holy people. And they will know that we are your children because they will feel the love coming from us even when they are giving us hatred. Bless us today in a special way. And bless our meal that we also are going to have today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep standing as we're going to sing from the hymnal. I notice we don't have any musician today.